Chesam and Beis, Tanur Rabbanan. We have to go to, yeah, Misech the Sarech. So? In the middle. Oh. Yeah, Tanur Rabbanan right there. The Rabbis start in a Brisa. Kala Toya Zavis. All the mistaken Zavis. Mevies Karban, Ve'ina Nechal. They bring a Karban, but the Karban can't be eaten. Because, mm-hmm. like yesterday we learned, that there could be mistakes. What happened? You got it? Yeah, I can't believe I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you impressed us. <laughs> so, Chutz mi Pischa Shiva u Pischa Shmaina. Except for the one that only needed to wait seven days, or to one that needed to wait eight days. Now, that was a case of where she saw blood for either 12 days or 13 days straight. If you saw blood for 12 days, I didn't bring my uh, my little blocks, but if you saw blood for 12 days or 13 days straight, what happens is, the first two days, we could have assumed (coughs) that that was from the last ziba, two days. The first day, the, the third day of the 13 days or the 12 days was the first of Nida. So now I have two, and now I have this. The third day is beginning of seven, so it's two plus seven would be nine. And now I have, she saw 12 days. So nine, 10, 11, 12 is, is, um, is, is three days of Ziva. So the only possible way that this woman could see 12 days straight the, o- the only possibility we have is that she's a Zava as well. Even if two of the day, even if I divide up two of the days before, so she's to, to the Ziva before, so she's not a real Zava. And I, then I have seven, but I'm still left with three days afterwards where she becomes a Zava Gvela. So, so therefore, her carbon is going to be different. She may be as carbon than because she's going to need to bring a carbon, and the carbon's going to be it's going to be a real carbon because she has to be a zava gadol. It's impossible to see twelve days straight, and there's no zava there. The Gemara asks, "Atu kalatei zavis? What what was the Bryce's expression here? All mistaken, all people that make a mistake are zavis. Vesu and also yoyim echad b'shnei yamim basasui carbon he. It says anyone that makes a mistake is a zava." But the carbon that they bring is not eaten. We ask, first of all, everyone that makes a mistake is not necessarily a zava. And also, if they only saw it for one day, they're not a zava either. Or for two days, they're not a zava. It takes three days to become a zava. Alakol zavais hatoyes, maybe it's carbon. Rather, all zavais, which means someone that sees for three days, they do. They need to bring a carbon. But the carbon's not eaten. Not eaten. Chutz mi pescha sheva, pescha shemene shemes carbon echal. Except for one, that her <coughs> solution is seven days or eight days. Because that woman whose solution is seven days or eight days really saw for 12 days. This is the end of yesterday's Gemara. And therefore, it's impossible that she's not a Zavag However you divide it up, she has to be a Zavag Okay. So when it says it's not <coughs> call, it's not eaten because that's the result of her status? Or is that teaching us something new? Tell me again. Lo a call. It's not eaten. Is that yeah. the result of her status, or that's is teaching because we us don't something know. new? That's because we don't know if it's yeah, we if don't it's know real. The correct counting. Right. We don't know. Right. So just in case they bring a carbon, but we don't know if it's if they really needed to. Very nice. The Mishnah says, "Ein benegayim paches mishvua echad." When it comes to to Tsaras. Oh nice, thank you. When it comes to Tsaras, so there's Tsaras on the body, Tsaras on the clothing, Tsaras on the house. When it comes to Tsaras, the smallest amount of time that you would need to decide if the person's tar is one week. You need at least one week to determine if he's tired. But it can't take more than three weeks. 
We're going to discuss in the Gemara how that works. Pa, the Gemara now says, Shpachis mi Shavua, less than a week, you can't have. That's Nigi Adam. That's referring to a person, a person that has Tiras. It's actually referring to specifically if a person has Tiras on a burn or he has on a, um, a, a boil and on those um, <coughs> on that scar tissue he gets develops Tsaras so what they do is they look at it a week later if it's spread or if it has the signs of Tsaras it grows the hairs the color of the hair the, that would make it Tsaras so then he's stomach it if nothing happens, if it stays the same, then we let him go. So you're tahar. So that's a very unique case where where Saras only takes one week and we decide, okay, you're tahar. It didn't spread, you're fine. So follow this. A guy goes to the doctor and he has symptoms. So some, they say, well, let's look at it again in a week. He comes back a week later, the symptoms are the same. He says, okay, it's nothing. You're free to go home. That's this type of taras. He's not going to the doctor, he's going to the kaya. But nothing went away, it just stayed the same, he goes home. He didn't, there's no simani tara, there's no simani tuma. It's just the fact that nothing happened, you go home. Other taras... It's isolated for that week. Isolated for that week, right. Quarantine. <coughs> Other taras, if it's not on a burn, if it's not on a... It's actually, if you look at Rashi and the Chumash and the Ramban, you'll see that it's not so clear. But other um, Tsaras, after the first week, if he comes back and nothing happened, they quarantine him again for a second week. Then in the second week, then they send him home. They say, okay, it's, not, it's no problem. It's tar. Well, yes, I'll slice us, but it can't be more than three weeks. That's Nigei Batim. You see, by a house, if there's Tsaras on the house, after the second week, where nothing changes, they take the stone out, they put in a new stone, and they put on new plaster, and then they see if it comes back or not. So it really takes three weeks for Saras on the house to be pure. Because if nothing happens in the first two weeks, he's still not done. They have to take out the stone and put it in, put in a new stone. Amar Rav Papa, Rav Papa says, Tzitkascha kaharareyel, your righteousness is like strong mountains. Elu nigeyadam. These are saras of a person. And the explanation, what's happening here, is that God is kind that he allows the person to have the information after one week. Tzitkascha, God's righteousness, is so strong like a, like a mountain because he only has to wait one week and he already has his verdict. Mishpatechet ha'im rabba, but your laws, your mishpatim, is as deep as the as the, the depth, the ta'im, the depths of the sea. Elu nigei batim. These are the tzaras of a house. Why? Because a person has to wait wait three weeks to find out what his answer is. Is he tar or not? And that seems like it's more difficult to to wait that in, that that uh, limbo. Amar, <coughs> um, the Gemara asks like this: Pashte the grub, the grub, my ksiv. That's a drasha. You you took a pasuk in Tehillim, Tehillim Lamed Bav, and you say that it's talking about tzaras of a person or tzaras of a house. Tzitkasra kahar reyel mishpatecha taim raba. But what's the literal? What does it literally mean? Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda says. If your righteousness was not as strong as a mountain, who could stand in front in front of you? Who can stand in front of your judgment that's as deep as the abyss, the depths of the sea? Who could stand in front of your strong, powerful judgment? If you're not for your righteousness. Rabbi Amar, Rabbi says, this is a discussion between Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda. This is Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda. 
by the discussion is between Rav Yehuda and Rabbah, basically right there. He said, they say, Rabbah says, Tipkascha Kaharayel, your righteousness is as strong as a mountain, is, is, is like strong mountains. Because your judgments are that great, are that uh, deep. What do they mean? What is the argument here? It says the argument is It's a machlekes between Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yisrael Bar Chanina. Here you have Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yisrael Bar Chanina right there. What's going on in, the, in Israel? Uh, Israel. Yeah. These guys are, they communicate with each other? Or they, or they don't know that this happening. is the first time you have. I mean, we had it before, but we didn't mark it. Rabbi Yisrael Bar Chanina. Who are you talking about? And he's arguing with Rabbi Lazar. It goes like this. Sure, then what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean these guys and these guys, or these guys and these guys? Well, the communication came from came from Ula. There was, there was communication. Ula, Ula is the traveler. Ula is a traveler. Ravan is a traveler. Ravini is a traveler. So they would bring it over to there. But but I, I, right here it doesn't say who's bringing it over. I'm just those, oh, so those they don't have WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, there's no way of communicating, and they're contemporaries. Yeah, they're contemporaries. Hmm. The itmar was stated: Rabbi Lazar Amar Kaivesh, Rabbi Yisroel Bar Chanina Amar Naisei. Regarding the pasuk of your righteousness. Said, no, the, regarding the pasuk of Rav Chesed, where it says that God's the pasuk says that God's kindness is very great in the in the Yud Gimel Midas Rachman. What is God's kindness? Why? What does God do? So there's two interpretations. One interpretation is from Rabbi Lazar. He says Kaivish. He says that God takes away sins off the scale and He hides them under His throne. He just takes a few off. Excuse the excuses them, and he, he just takes them off. And therefore, yeah, if you have a balance, and you don't want the, the sins to to be heavier, so he takes a few off, and he hides them. And that way, the the the, the merits can can outweigh. Excuse, excused absences, absence <laughs> right. of doing what's right. Rabbi Yisroel Bachanina and Naisei. Rabbi Yisroel Bachanina says that God actually takes the merits. And he lifts it up. So he helps the merit. No, nice say is he takes the sins and he lifts them up. He lifts up the sins so that the merits should go down, should weigh. Not that he lifts up the sins to make it lighter, as if it's lighter, and so that way the merits will outweigh the. There's two ways that either he takes he off the weight or he just lifts it up. Either he takes it off and hides it, or he just lifts it's prohibited. it. Prohibited. So you can't play with scales. Okay. Puts his finger on the scale, right? So he pushes it down, lifts it up. The deed of the Torah, he can always do something. It depends when, where, and how. That's always depends. Understood. Even the worst thing possible, even, even killing, you know, is allowed. It depends when, where, and how. So the Gemara says like this: Raba says. Rebbe Lazar. Rabbi goes like Rebbe Lazar. Now, remember, Rebbe Lazar says that he takes the sins and he hides them. Rabbi said that your righteousness is like a mountain. Why? Because your judgment is in the depth of the... In the that means what your judgment, which means the sins, God takes away and hides them in the depth. And that's why his righteousness is so great. Throws on the ocean. Right. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yisroel Bar Chanina, and Rabbi Yehuda goes like Rabbi Yisroel Bar Chanina. Rabbi Yehuda, he said that if not for your righteousness was like a, a mountain, then who could stand in front of you? Because they're so heavy, all the sins. So that means that your righteousness is like a mountain. Means that God lifts it up in order to allow the merits. 
in, the, in order to allow the merit to um, to to weigh down. So, um, Hasidus explains the kavesh nice and kavesh is a, a difference to the um, motivation for sin and the actual sin. When the motiv- when the motivation is there, so then that could be elevated. That could be nicey. That God can carry. And because the motivation could be changed from the, the could be changed from one thing to another. But the sin itself, once it's put into Makshavadi Burmaisa, once it's put into thought, speech and action, that needs to be taken off. That's how so this explains. It says explains that we're not arguing. That it depends what you're talking about. If it's the um, the the uh, the attitude of sin, or if it's the actual sin. Okay. Ain Paichsen. Okay, get ready. This is a new Mishnah. Ain Paichsen me arba chadashim hamubaram bashana v'leinir yaser al shemayna. Here's how it works. Do this. Uh, I try to keep this as simple as possible. The Jewish calendar, we have twelve months. The m- months are made because of the the lunar cycle. <coughs> the lunar cycle is how long it takes for the moon to go around Earth. Now, twenty-nine. So twenty. It's twenty-nine and a half, plus some change, some halakim, 763, is that it? It's more. Um, we have an accountant here. What is exactly? Does it say how many halakim? Forty-four minutes. Forty-four minutes and zero seconds. It's just a oh yeah, it's Tafshin Sadikimo, which is seven ninety-three. Seven ninety-three. That means. That means, that, let's ignore the halakim. We have every month is twenty-nine days and twelve hours. If I have two months together. I'm going to have 59 days. You need over 59 days. I have two months together, I have 59 days. So what I need to do every month is to have, every other month, is to have one month 30 days and one month 29 days. So because a month is 29 days and 12 hours, I have 12 hours left over. So if I join them to, if I join those 12 hours together every two months, I can add an extra day to the calendar and I have 30 days. So during the summer, what we do is we do Nisan, I guess you can do it like this. Um, how would they do it with the knuckles that go in? Whoops, and Charlie, whoops, Charlie. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nisan is is Malay, the year is Chaser. Sivan is Malay, and Nisan is Sivan. Thomas is Chaser. Av is Malay, and El is Chaser. And Tishri is Malay. So we, we go every other month. Every other month. Now, if you do that, six months of the year are going to be 30 days. Six months of the year are going to be 29 days. So if you, if I, how many days would be in the year? So if you do 12 times 30, so it would be 360, 360. But I have minus to remove six. Si- minus 6. I'm left with 353. <laughs> that means <coughs> that 354, if I want to divide this up into the week, which that's what we're going to need to do in this Gemara, it's really 7, 354 divided by 7. It's like 7 into 350 would be five times. It would give me 50 weeks of the year. Just 50 weeks instead of 52 in, a, in the 
there's 50 weeks in the year, and there's a remainder four. That means if Rosh Hashanah is on a Shabbos, the following year, it's not going to be Shabbos. It's going to be four days later on a Wednesday. Okay. Here's, here's what the Gemara says. The Mishnah. You can't have less than four months. Really, you're supposed to have six months that are, that are leap months. Mu'ubara means that they have 30 days. Like the word Mu'ubarath is pregnant, an extension. So a month that's an ex- that's a, this Mu'ubara or Mu'ubarath, it means that it has a 30-day 30, a 30 month instead of a 29. Because you can have a month that's 29 days and you can have a month that's 30 days. You can't have less than four that are 30 days. You're supposed to have six. You can't have under four. Vleinira Yesser al we have to see what that means. But apparently it means that you can't have more than eight. You're supposed to have six. You can't have more than we'll see it tomorrow. Like that's what it means. Shtei alechem, the two loaves of bread that are that are um, eaten on Shvuas, ein necholim paches mishnayim vleyesser al shleisha. Normally on Yom Tif, you're allowed to cook. You're allowed to cook on Yom Tif. You're allowed to bake on Yom Tif. It's called eichel nefesh. You're allowed to do things that are necessary, necessary for eating, and um, things that everyone needs. So cooking goes under that category. The only problem is that food that's not for personal use, food that's for temple use, that you're not allowed to cook on, on Yom Tif, if you could do it before. For public, for, uh, for temple, for... for, for so. So that I can't, because that's not considered Eichel Nefesh. Achish Yasel Chal Nefesh, that's not for, the, for an individual. That's not for the, it's for, it's for God. So if it could be done before, then I do it before. So therefore, the Shtei Alechem is at least one day old. It's eaten on the second day. But let's say Shavuos is on a Sunday. Watch out, uh, the, the, come on. The, Shavuos is on a Sunday. That means I'm supposed to make it on Erev Shavuos. I'm supposed to bake the bread on Erev Shavuos. But I can't do it because Erev Shavuos is Shabbos. So I have to do it on Friday. That means I'm getting the bread after three days. It's on, uh, two days later, which is on the third day. So it can't be less than the second day, and, but it's never more than the third day. We never have two days Shabbos, right? So that's, uh, it's, it, can't, it can't be more than three days. Uh-huh. Someone said the, the Sunday is the Shabbat Shemi Shogalias. <laughs> okay. Lechem upon him, the loaves of bread that are on the Shulchan, that are on the, uh, on the table that's in the, in the Heichal, in the Beit HaMikdash, that was made a week earlier. So it was on the table for a full week. And then it was taken off on Shabbos and eaten there. So a full week from Shabbos to Shabbos is eight days. But they didn't bake the bread the week earlier on Shabbos. Because you, you could do it out of Shabbos. So you do it on Friday. That's nine days. So the lechem upon me nechal pachos mitah. It's eaten nine days old. Some like it nine days old, right? I'm sorry? How the bread was picked. <coughs> Well, it says that it's a miracle, but if you do have those sourdough breads, they're just as hard and heavy uh, the first day as they are nine days later. <laughs> but this was miraculously warm and fresh from for nine days. And it can't be more than 11. Why is this 11? Because let's say Rosh Hashanah is the only holiday that's two days even in the land of Israel, even in its two days. So let's say you're supposed to bake it on the Friday before, a week ago Friday, right? That's how you're supposed to bake the bread. But let's say a week ago Friday was Rosh Hashanah. You can break it, bake it on Thursday or Friday. You have to bake it on Wednesday. But that's a, it's instead of being nine days on the Friday, it goes back 10 and 11. It goes back to, so, but it can't be, you can't have more than that. You can't fit more holidays into there. And extend it. That's the, the largest amount of time that it could be is 11 days. 
a child cannot be circumcised under eight days, but it can't be more than 12. So the explanation here twelve is there's 12 days. What does that mean? Less than the child. Yeah, that's because he's not 12, but this is what we're talking about because of the calendar. So it works like this. If a child is born, Bein Hashemashas Erev Shabbos, so Bein Hashemashas Erev Shabbos, his bris is supposed to, let's say he was born on Friday. Bein Hashemashas means it's twilight, it's in between, we don't know if it's Friday or Shabbos. So he's born on Friday. So his bris should be on, on Friday. Yes. This should be on Friday. The problem is, is that you can't do a bris early. So you would have to do it a day later, because it could be that he was born on Shabbos. Now, the problem with doing the bris on Shabbos is that it may be Mila... You, you're allowed to do a bris on Shabbos if the baby's born on Shabbos. But you're only allowed to do Mila Bismana on Shabbos. You can't do Mila Shalei Bismana. Let's say someone didn't have a bris for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden they say, the doctor say, okay, yeah, uh, he's ready, he can have a bris. That bris you don't do on Shabbos. You say, well, why not? I'm going to do a bris right away, Shabbos. No, you do it during the week. On whatever day, the, it's... He has to wait a week or whatever, but you do it during the week. Here I have a baby that could have needed the bris on Friday. And instead, we're going to do it on Shabbos. That's not allowed, because it could be Friday was the real day. So therefore, I'll have to do it on, on Sunday. So the, or, automatically, we're already... Oh, very good. Let's say Rosh Hashanah is Sunday. And Sunday and Monday. But then... If he would have done it on Friday, that would be eight days later. Shabbos. But he do it on Shabbos is nine, Sunday is ten, and Monday is eleven. He doesn't can't do it on Monday either because Sunday Monday is Rosh Hashanah. He has to do it on the twelfth, on the Tuesday. It's not really twelve because it could be Friday. counting Friday because and, of that possibility. And if it, if it was Friday, so then it wouldn't, then it wouldn't be. So it's only eleven and a half. <laughs> My linear yes or else shmeina. What does it mean that it doesn't appear to be more than eight? We're going back to the Mishnah. He said that you can't have a, a less than four months that are thirty days. What does it mean? It not more than doesn't appear to have more than eight. Am Rav Huna linear lachem la aber yes or else Rav Huna says it's exactly the contrast. You don't have less than four. And it, and you don't have more than eight leap months, 30-day months. Maishna Tisha Deloy. Why can't you have nine? What does this mean? Before the calendar was set, after the calendar was set? What does this mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. No question. Means that if, if, How many times in life do you get a yeah? Just pay for yeah. If before the calendar was set, they were legitimately working off of the moon. Right. It may be discussing the way the calendar is made. Uh, maybe discussing that they used calculations even when they had um, it may, even it, when they had the uh, It the, makes sense to understand that the fixed calendar that we're working with should not be less than right. Or it could be that they you can't using control Right. But it could be also that they used calculations even in when they had the, te the, the witnesses coming, they still used calculations. They definitely did. It says, it says here that uh, in the time of the Talmud, the base then would establish the months to ensure that Yom Kippur would never occur on a Friday or a Sunday, right. and that uh, the seventh day of Sukkot would never occur on Shabbos. Right. So even in addition for the witnesses to have a They still had. Uh, why, not, why couldn't you have nine leap months? It says, in Cain, if they would do nine leap months, kadim asi siara, then the, the moon, that means the, the, the birth of the moon, siara is the birth of the moon, plus a yaimi, would be... Really? Yeah. Uh, how did we get from lunar to moon? Where, where does moon come from? What is that? Lo lunar is Monday. Moon day. Oh, yeah? Okay. Lo so lunar. Lunar is Monday? I believe so. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, uh, that's interesting. That's moon day. 
Yeah. Uh, moon day. Moon day, yeah. How did it turn from... Uh, where's the... Where's the M from in the beginning of the word? Or, you know, I don't know which letter, what's the source of the word. So, um... I used to think that the people became um, crazy because of the moon. So they huh. called them lunatics. Oh, that's very interesting. It's still, you know, it's still true. One minute, it's because the moon is lunatic. That's what they thought, that the, so that the moon would make it like the same the way. emergency makes, rooms go like, crazy. Like and the same uh, way that the moon makes a rise in the, 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 the rise in the tide. Really? Yeah. 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 You think that the water and the brain would rise and make a person psychiatrically I know in um, there's a uh, Abra, uh, there's Rab Abba Hayarchi, there was in the Rishonim, there was. Um, oh. The sages, the Yarchi, they were called Yarchi, but they came from a city called Dunio. Yeah, the moon. The problem here is, is that if you have, David, you can join us. If you have, um, if you have three, if you have three extra days in the in the in the calendar, <coughs> you have three extra days in the calendar. You're going to the Moilod. The birth of the new moon is going to be three days away. That means when Rosh Hashanah comes in, and the people already saw that the birth of the new moon, they're going to look up and they're going to say, the rabbis made Rosh Hashanah instead of making it on a Wednesday, which said, let's see, Rosh Hashanah used to be on a Shabbos last year. This year, Rosh Hashanah is supposed to be on a Wednesday.